Hi all, welcome to episode four of Science Sizzler. After I don't know how long, so you can definitely hold me guilty for that. But anyway, I've got to you uh, two very interesting technologies, and that is what is the theme of episode four. So I really hope you like it. I thought I will have an elaborate conversation or elaborate introduction, but unfortunately, the two technologies that I tell you about, I go in depth and try to explain you some concepts related to it. um and that was also something which was not my field of expertise particularly the first technology that i'm going to talk about so i really hope you like this video and if you do do let me know down in the comment section or some other topics that you would want me to cover so without other uh without any further ado let's get started all right so the first uh topic for today's discussion in the theme of technology is solar cells so as you know globally there is a heavy demand uh for renewable sources of energy and lot of uh, you know countries have taken a step forward and set deadlines that by uh, a decade or a couple of decades they want to be completely reliant only on renewable sources of energy and they do not want to generate through energy through coal or through oil and in fact you can see that due to the recent uh, russian ukraine conflict a lot of uh, you know european countries uh, had a disruption uh, because the oil was being supplied by russia and they had to put sanctions because of which they could not get the sources of oil so there was a heavy disruption because of conflicts like that right so uh, that has even accelerated uh, the adaptation of renewable sources of energy and as you can see from this graph as well 37% of the electricity consumption the energy generated for electricity consumption uh, comes from a renewable sources of energy and austria in fact uh, utilizes 70% of its energy through renewable sources so there is definitely a, a heavy a, a great need i can say of commercialization um uh, tools which can basically generate more and more energy and like i said uh, today's topic is solar cells and let me talk about the limitation of solar cells so that you can understand where this research comes into the picture the theoretical efficiency okay of a pn single junction solar cell i'll talk about what exactly is a single pn junction solar cell in just a bit but just to understand the theoretical limit theoretical efficiency okay that is for an ideal system uh the theoretical efficiency is 33% and right now uh what we are having that is uh silicon based uh, solar cells that are commercially uh utilized have a efficiency somewhere between 15 to 20% right and the theoretical efficiency of a single junction uh, cell is 33% uh around 33% and for silicon based single junction cells it is around 30% i will just explain it to you in in, in a bit so if we can bring in solar cells commercially okay they have to be commercially viable because you can achieve a higher efficiency but then you are using very exotic you know materials which are not commercially viable so you need to uh, sort of like you know come up with materials or come up with solar cells which are commercially viable now let me help you understand what exactly is a single junction solar cell so a single junction solar cell basically tells you that there is only one type of semiconductor if you only have a, a semiconductor of a single material it can absorb electro electromagnetic radiation let's say in a particular frequency only or a particular wavelength of electromagnetic radiation so that is a single junction solar cell but let's say if we have multiple junction solar cells okay that is we have multiple layers of solar cells on top of each other for example so they can absorb electromagnetic radiation of different wavelengths depending depending on the material that they have right so in today's uh topic that i'm going to cover so there's a uh, there's a company called oxford pv which is basically a company that originated from oxford university and that was founded in 2010 and recently they have come up with a very remarkable um, efficiency they have shown that they can commercially make solar cells that have an efficiency close to 30% and these uh, solar cells are actually uh, based on your multiple junction solar cells so what they have used is they have used single uh, silicon based solar cells okay and ap apart from that they have basically layered it up with perovskite okay so perovskite basically uh, absorbs energy in the lower wave wavelength that means it absorbs a uh, bluer light whereas silicon ob ob uh, absorbs the higher wavelength energy that is the redder light okay so in in the red wavelength region basically and uh, so they have using these multiple junction solar cells uh, using this type of solar cells that is a combination of silicon and perovskite they have attained an efficiency close to 30% now let me tell you uh, why uh, this uh, uh, theoretical uh, limit is there so this limit to the theoretical efficiency 
of a single jun- single pn junction solar cell was given by two scientists shockley and quasar way back in 1961 and it is known as the shockley quasar limitation okay and let us understand the three ways by which uh, uh, the efficiency is reduced the first one is the spectrum losses that basically means that any uh, you know any material cannot absorb energy throughout the electromagnetic radiation it has a particular limit only so that is called the spectrum losses the second one is called the recombination so if you have a basic understanding of semiconductors you know about the electron hole principle right so so the electricity conduction takes place when there is a hole and the electron generated so recombination is the opposite of that that means basically a electron from the conduction bank band comes back to the valence band and basically occupies that hole right so that is one of the ways of recombination there are different uh, you know mechanisms of recombination like for example there is uh, radiative recombination and then there is non radiative re- combination and there is auger effect as well so uh, so you can study it in a in more detail and then the third form of loss is the black body radi- radiation which in simple terms means that any heated object will lose energy in the form of radiation right so these are the three reasons because of which the theoretical efficiency of any single pn junction solar cell was set set to 33% is called the shockley quasar limitation and let us try and understand and see it in more detail Okay, so this is an excerpt that I have taken from one of the articles published in Science Journal, and uh, this depicts the efficiency of different materials that are used in organic solar cells, uh, particularly the s- single junction solar cells. So as you can see over here, this is the uh, the short key quasar lim- limit, uh, which is depicted over here in the black solid line. this gray line over here depicts 75% efficiency of the sq limit and this over here this gray line depicts the 50% efficiency of the theoretical uh, maximum that is the sq limit and uh, uh, the x axis over here shows the band gap for the semiconductor and on the y axis you can see the efficiency in terms of percentage so you can see the crystalline silicon over here uh, is having an approximate uh, value of 25% whereas if you see uh, gallium arsenide it is having almost close to 30% which is which is that means that this is a very efficient material but then like i said if you talk about commercialization that cost involved also uh, is something that needs to be factored in now the second topic in the theme of technology is the ever talked about and very popular right now artificial intelligence uh, but now i have got to you a different side of artificial intelligence the dark side of artificial intelligence so to say so uh, recently there was a conference that was held in um, uh, i'm not sure where it was held but in that uh, conference it is an international security conference and uh, there one pharmaceutical company uh, was called uh, for and their ai system was utilized and what the uh, you can say analyst did over there was whenever an ai system ai system in in the pharmaceutical pharmaceutical industry what it tries to do basically is try to, it tries to find molecules which will let's say tightly bind to a particular protein and thereby inhibit the function of the protein right that's in 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 a very uh, you can say layman manner i'm telling you this that that's that's how ai systems work and they are optimizing other properties so one of the properties that it has to optimize really well is toxicity because you cannot have molecules um, you know that are highly toxic you cannot use them as medicines for obvious reasons so what they the analyst did was they toggled with this uh, with this equal equal equality switch so basically instead of making it in like if you think about a ai ai algorithm it will be not not equivalent to a toxicity basically we want materials which are not at all toxic right so you can say it is like a non equivalent uh, symbol but what they did they toggled the switch that is from a non equivalent symbol they went to equivalent symbol that means we want toxic chemicals and what they found was quite shocking that many of the molecules uh, that the ai predicted were actually very very potent nerve agents right so these nerve agents are used for very high profile assassinations uh, you know like vx is there and sarin is there sarin in fact has been used uh by a lot of not a lot of but i know of a single cult in japan which used sarin to uh, you know carry out a uh, sort of like mass murders so you know these nerve agents are organophosphorus compounds and they can be used for a lot of uh, you know dirty stuff uh, so this was a, a so- shocking revelation for the uh, you know for the researchers who had actually designed that ai algorithm but this is something which is 
which is well known right uh, people who were in ai they already knew that such things can happen and uh, the the thing is what they uh, uh, sort of like are debating is that these things would already already be available with professionals those who want to carry out such you know or who want to find these toxic chemicals or very uh, you know very harmful chemicals or poisonous chemicals uh, who are professionals in this field they will ev- eventually anyway find it out or they will develop their own ai algorithms and you ca- you cannot do anything about that but wh- what this study brings in is that most of the ai's uh, you know tools are open source that means they are readily available to the public so I- in their perception these tools what they are going to do is that if it is open available to the public it will give the power of you know designing toxic or poisonous chemicals even to a general public the second problem is also about the synthetic processes so uh, right now ai is also f- uh, focusing on retrosynthesis that from which materials we can make a particular compound so this has also created a lot of issues because uh, what happens is let's say if a particular toxic chemical or a poison uh generally uh is made by let's say three or four different routes right but an ai can give you 1000 routes now what generally these law enforcement agencies do is that they come up with uh you know these uh, uh these starting materials that are readily uh, you required for designing these toxic or poisonous chemicals or for example drugs as well but when you use ai for retrosynthesis and you get 1000 routes so let's say there are four or five routes that are generally very well known so what these law inform- law enforcement agencies will do they will ban these starting materials that are required or they will put some restrictions on these starting materials but when you have 1000 or 10000 routes that are shown by ai then it will diffic- it will become very difficult for law enf- enforcement agencies to ban all these chemicals and this will also give an alternate to these uh, you know cartels to you know to be able to design the toxics or to be able to synthesize these toxic chemicals uh, by and large now one of the suggestions which has been talked about is to bring in people who think diabolically what that basically means is for example if you talk about computer sciences as well there are ethical hackers right who are good at hacking so they find out vulnerabilities in a particular tool or a particular you know website and then they bring it into the notice before the hackers can you know exploit that vulnerability so the same thing can be done with ai you can bring in people who can think about the destructive uses of this particular tool and uh, you know then you can convey it to the authors who have developed that tool and they can you know find a fix for it i also wanted to introduce a third uh, particular uh, technology which is utilizing sewage treatment plants uh, or sewage uh, houses to basically find out early indications of a disease or early indication of use of you know drugs in a particular area uh, and and for several other you know reasons so i thought i would cover it in this particular video itself but this was getting too long so i would keep it uh, in you know in store for the next video anyway i this video took a lot of effort so if you liked it please do not forget to give a thumbs up also leave Uh, comments down below um if you found found any of the topics interesting or you want to discuss uh, any of these um technologies so thank you again thank you uh, for watching i will see you in the next video really really soon till then take care and bye bye have a nice day hey guys so i am a verified educator on an academy and along with that i am also available on the an academy plus platform where i am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the an academy plus platform using my referral code that is sethi sethi and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the an academy for that all you need to do is go to the an academy website or download the an academy learning app and search my name over there that is sethi Once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the an academy platform all right